Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Cruz. This is Bryce Vine. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan This is Sebastian Younger. This is Daryl This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. This is Dr. Bob Greenberg. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Hey everybody, this is Pete A. Turner, and this is Phil Green, and today we have got a fight for you, father versus son, Bob taking on Ziggy, the Marlies. This is going to be exciting. Phil brought this fight to us, and we were lucky, very, very lucky to get Wes maybe to come back on and do another fight with us, and I just wanted to say thanks, because it's always good to hang out with you, man. Pleasure, pleasure. Love them. Yeah, and, and you know you know this genre of music. You've just recently done a lot of work on UB40's new album, and it, it's such a it's always awesome to have a professional ear in these things because I do my best to get smarter. But boy, you know you you <laughs> will know things that we can't know uh, just from listening. So it's it's great that it's great to have you here. Cool man, thank you, Phil. Can you introduce our fighters? In the red corner from Trenchtown, Jamaica, coming in with his ninth studio album from 1997, we have the legend himself, Bob Marley, with Exodus. And in the blue corner from Kingston, Jamaica, coming in with his second solo album from 2006, we have the son of the legend, Ziggy Marley, with Love is My Religion. Now let's throw it to Dr. Richard Lackey for his patent-pending pre fight analysis. Richard. How do you see this father-son fight playing out? This week's fight is very unique. We've got iconic father versus son following in dad's footsteps. At first glance, it seems like, oh, this is going to be just kind of a runaway, but I don't know if I would quite go that far. I've caught Ziggy a couple of times at some festivals, puts on a great show, some great music, lots of fun, but he's just got, boy, does he have some of the biggest shoes to fill um, when it comes to music. So let's look at look at the numbers and kind of see how this thing breaks down. In the popularity traits, we've got, you know, Spotify was pretty much a walk for Exodus. But with iTunes, Ziggy put up a good fight. That one turned out to be five rounds to four to one tie, which really kind of surprised me. So there's something there with uh, Ziggy's album. But then you start getting into the other, other parameters, and it's just, uh, it's just, it's Bob Marley all the way, pretty much. There, as far as reviews go, there's just so little on Love is My Religion that Bob just walked away with the reviews. Uh, Rolling Stone 500, Exodus is the 169th out of 500, and Ziggy's not even in the in the conversation. Now, the one thing that Ziggy does have is he, that album did win the Grammy for Best Reggae Album, so um, that was his one little little shining light in all of this. Uh, rounds to look at for Exodus, 6, 9, and 10. Rounds to look for for Love is My Religion is 2, 6, and 7. So we've got a common round. We'll see how that works out. I think while song to song it may be close, I don't think this is going to end up being close. I'm going unanimous decision, probably 7 rounds to 3 for Bob Marley's Exodus. Back to you guys. So we got an album that's critically acclaimed and against an album that's critically acclaimed. Any thoughts going in, Phil? You built this fight. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that the whole idea behind this fight was to see if Ziggy could stand up to uh, the reputation and the quality of his father. And going into the fight, my expectations are probably not, but I love both these artists. Grew up listening to Bob and then really got introduced to Ziggy with his children's children's albums um, and getting my kids listening to, you know, different types of music and different sounds. And Ziggy yeah. Marley was, was great in introducing kind of this reggae sound to a younger generation through his kids' music. So I uh, really kind of grew to love Ziggy through that avenue. But me growing up listening to Bob, um, this seemed like a, a fun, natural fight, but not sure if uh, Ziggy's chops are, are quite up to his dad's. Yeah, did you have trouble? I know I did in trying to reduce the amount of in influence that Bob Marley has just by being Bob Marley. Like, it's just really hard to separate those things. Yeah, 
I mean, it was tough, right? Yeah. So you have someone that kind of helped define the genre of music. And, you know, then you have his kid who basically grew up around all these talented musicians and was introduced to different types of music. And, and similar to Bob, Bob was uh, Jamaican, but grew up also a little bit in the U.S. and was introduced to U.S. music. And that's what brought in his jazz and blues type influences that you hear in his music. So, you know, even though it's reggae categorized as reggae, it's really his type of reggae kind of redefined what people thought of as reggae by introducing kind of these other sounds that weren't part of traditional reggae. And what about you, Wes? What are your thoughts? I mean, going in, you have the, the massive impact of Bob Marley, but you also have growing up from infancy as a musician, you know, taught by a master. How do you separate those two things? Yeah, it, it was <laughs> when it came about, it was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I have to confess as, 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 you know, growing up, I, I was definitely not into reggae at mm. all. I mean, I, I did, you know, I just had a handful of sort of Mali songs that, that I liked, but in, in general, I, I never really understood the reggae thing until, you know, fairly recently I started working with the UB40 guys. It was like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I get it. Mm. And that, it was really cool doing this fight because it made me listen to these to these albums with a completely different mindset. I was like, "Yeah, this is good." <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. So it, it was it was a good a good little comeback, and, and yeah, now now I really really love it. It's such a textured and very. I mean, you look at the music that. Bob was making in the studio back in the 70s and the amount of, of musicianship it took to put that much music mm -hmm. in the time, you know, like what was possible in the studio versus now. All the percussion, the different, you know, the, all the different styles, the ways of playing the guitar, two different guitars playing in time. And there's not a bunch of, at least from my ear, you tell me, there's not a bunch of bleed over. So they're really no. accomplishing quite a bit. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we'll, 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 we'll see through the fight. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm always going to approach this a little bit more from a sound engineer's point of view. And that's, that's why it's great to have you. And so I can't, I can't help it. Let's hear that, that engineer's point of view. Let's go ahead and start this thing off round Correct. one, natural mystic versus into the groove. What do you think, Wes? Uh Oh, well, I've, I've got this thing about reggae being, because it's such party music, you know, it's it's instant bounce, instant groove. You just can't help yourself if, whether you like it or not. You're gonna you're gonna bounce to it. And Natural Mystic is this it just hits right home in that instant moody dark reggae vibe. We've got the super heavy bass. I mean, we you know we've got this joke going in in in, in engineering is like. If you're mixing a reggae album and, and, and they could get away with asking for more bass on the hi-hat, they could. You know, it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like more bass on everything. Yeah. And you got the, the super crispy top end and, on the hats and the shakers. But there's a, an amazing space around everything. You could, you, you're like you're in the room where they recorded. You, know, you, you, can, you can feel the vibe. You can, you can see the band perform just just by listening to it it's you know it's instant banging opening track and then into the groove um oh god people are gonna hate me because i'm gonna be so picky but it just it just feels a little a little messy and and also it's quite difficult to compare the two tracks because you know you got natural mystic which is killer reggae vibe mm -hmm. and then into the groove is is actually not reggae at all it's it's more soca but to me it just didn't feel as defined it's not hitting as hard um, it just feels a little busy and and not as groovy it just feels a little clean where where you know to me reggae is is all about the groove it's all about the vibe and the feel and and this kind of you know, I hate to use the term too digital, but it, it almost feels a little digital to me. It feels a little clean. Hmm. So for me, you know, daddy's picking this one 10 to 9. 
Phil, what about you? I was going to say this round was probably the hardest round for me, and I had to go back and <laughs> forth. And actually, on my notes and my scorecard, I have scratched out the score and changed the score three times. Wow. So it's wow. it was a tough one for me. And um, I, agree, I agree with you, Wes, you know, for Into the Groove. I don't know. Did you call this? What'd you call this? What, Soka. Just, just what's Soka? Soka, yeah. It's uh, you know it's 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 the it's the sort of Caribbean it's the Caribbean groove which is a, a lot more Latin influenced you know it's not the clear downstrokes you know right so I reggae. agree with you Jack, on Jack. The, it's not reggae and I put mm. in, my, in my notes I have is this calypso what is this <laughs> um, yeah calypso soca there's a little bit of little bit of you know but I, it, it's it's definitely a lot more Latin influenced yeah right and then. I kind of had to separate, you know, the the way I looked at this is I'm not grading it or judging this as a reggae album, but just as, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. technically, you know, there's reggae beats and there's not reggae beats in some of these songs. Some of them are, you know, I think I have in my notes that one of these is, you know, has a little bit of ska in it. Another one is rock steady. So, you yep. know, it's not true reggae, but, you know, separating that out the guitar intro on Into the Groove just hooked me. I was like, oh, I really like that. That's really good. And I think it really sets the tone for the album and who Ziggy Marley is. And to me, Ziggy Marley is, unlike his dad, his message is more about love and fun. And it's just, it's a much more childish type, I guess, message and, and feel. And this kind of, this uh, this song, Into the Groove, just set that tone for the album for me. And it was just, you know, the horns chiming in, you know, the light it up, light it up with the horns, you know, in the, in the middle of the song. I, I thought that was fantastic. And it just really, really, really captured me. And, and I was like, okay, I played it. Actually, this, this song shows up out in my pool. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm used to, the, you know, this song kind of being the soundtrack to my pool life. It really kind of helps me get into that pool groove. Okay, that's... The one thing that I didn't like about the song is the kind of the the kids rhyming schemes that he has. So I almost it almost lost this round just by rhyming plunge with sponge. It was just <laughs> that's too, you know, elementary for me. You know, after going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know, natural mystic, I agree. Just the bass and the keyboard set that and the guitar set that that solid reggae foundation. And thought I heard blues guitar in there as well. Everything just seemed very well balanced and natural mystic. I would have scored this 10-10, but I'm trying to get away from, you know, scoring ties. And so it really came down to me in this round was, okay, if I'm having my pool party, <laughs> which song do I want on at the time? Oh, boy. And I'd rather listen to Into the Groove than, oh, than Natural Mystic. We had to go a long way to get there. And so I have, <laughs> I have Into the Groove winning 10 to Natural Mystic's nine. Oh, all right. I'll keep mine quick. This is this is Natural Mystic. It's one of Bob Marley's biggest songs ever. And, I, you know, look, I think the world of Ziggy Marley's work, I think his singing is great. Uh, he grew up as a musician. He's born into this. So he certainly has the vibe. His dad is from a different era where, where things weren't as certain. There was a lot more danger and there's a lot more corruption. His dad, despite his incredible success, didn't realize it until he was dead. You know, all the albums were sold by his kids. So Ziggy's got a happier uh, existence than, than the Mystic one. So I mm -hmm. get why he sings about love. He's seen Peter Tosh die. He's seen his dad get shot and then die from cancer. And, you know, so when he says emancipate your mind, free, your, free yourself, these are the themes that he's singing about. And it's so counter to what his dad was doing boy what his dad was doing natural mystic is such a strong song you know half this album is really political and he forces you to go look up marcus garvey and, and different names from from the past of the heroes of jamaica and the heroes of of the common man and and these themes are really really powerful and it's a great way to start off the album i went bob marley 10 9 round two love is my religion versus so much things to say. Phil, go ahead and kick us off. All right. So round two, let's let's talk about so much things to say first. I really enjoyed the the harmonized vocals in the song. It was really good. The humming, hmm. like you can't underestimate the the power of humming. Humming in the background of the song just was fantastic. And the song had a foot tapping rhythm, and it was it was very strong. 
I don't know, Wes, I don't know, maybe you know what this is, but the, there's a squishy or juicy sound in the intro. I have no idea what that was, but it was fantastic. I'd never heard it before. And, you know, just, it's kind of a squish, 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 you know, it's like, but it was ju- like a juicy bass. Huh. I couldn't tell if it came from a guitar or from w- w- where that came from, but it was fantastic. That said, love is my religion is kind of a, a mantra for me. I think that I look at everything as if we led with love, the world would be a better place. Again, the the lyrics and the rhyming, uh, they're a little elementary. Um, but then again, Ziggy's put out like five kids albums. Yeah. So, you know, maybe he had a hard time differentiating that this was not a kid's album, but I think he needs to get a little more sophisticated in his rhymes. But that said, I love this song. I love the message. I have love is my religion, 10 to so much things to say, nine. Boy, you are really working hard. <laughs> I got to give the son a fair shot, right? <laughs> uh, fair uh, shot. Otherwise, you know, his, two, two of his better songs on this album, if yeah. he can't win those rounds, then it's going to be, you know, poor, poor kid. Yeah. Well, look, I, I do think love is my religion. Great lyrics. You know, I don't condemn. I don't convert. Such a difference than what his dad talking about jaw all the time. Yeah, this is my calling. Have you heard? Bring all the lovers to the fort because no one is going to lose their soul. Great. I love that. All we need is love. It's a great message. It's a powerful song. More Latin-based themes. And I think what we see here from Ziggy is that he's a legit Grammy-level musician. He can stand out amongst his peers. Name aside, has really established himself. Unfortunately, he's going against so much things to say, and it's more of Bob's stellar work. Paul Bogle, Marcus Garvey, and talking about that point of view. And then he turns around and talks about what's said back to him. And the lyric is, you know, they've got la, 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 la. And it's perfect. It's part scat. It's also, you know, m- diminishing what the government is saying and offering back. And it's such a powerful thing. I just, I just love, I love that part. Like he's so much things to say from two different points of view. It's great. It's Bob Marley. It's 10, nine, his round. Wes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is weird, isn't it? Because yeah, like you said, Bob's Bob's first first half of the album is is all about it's it's all politics it's all about the shooting and you know having to having to flee his own country and but then with that you get all these other influences you know a lot of UK UK rock and and Junior is adding so much so much blues I mean a lot of aficionados didn't didn't like him for that sort of UK bluesy way of playing. I was just reading reading a, a wonderful Bob Marley book we have in the house where he was saying, you know, if 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 I if I have to be dictated by what it's going to be, mm. then then I can be free, you know. I, I have to have the freedom to to express and 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 have have my guys and girls express themselves. So it's tough to put that heavy political thing against the pure love that Ziggy is spreading <laughs> although I mean I, I probably have to admit that it, it, the, the first couple of songs in this album fight I was I was so like no 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 there's, there's, right. there's no way Ziggy's gonna win this um, <laughs> so I'm probably a bit more brutal in the beginning than than towards the end but 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 I always yeah with with, with love is my religion I just felt felt like you know the the reggae ingredient was like an afterthought it was like i am bob marley's son so i have to do reggae as where i'm you know maybe if that wasn't playing in the back of his mind or or the back of everybody's mind who was involved with it 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 might have come out stronger sort of oh well we have to make sure that ingredient is there yeah so I'm, i'm 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 missing a bit of production wise i just thought it felt a little dry as where, you know, I'm really used to those massive dub things going on in reggae, so which drive the track. So I was missing a little bit of that. And then so much things to say. It's, well, I mean, it, it's got me straight from the reggae fill at the intro. Yeah. You know? I was like, yep, here we are. And it just grooves like fuck. I'm going to give this to, to Bob again, so 10-9. But it was, it was a close call. It was a difficult one. Yeah, I found that round to be really difficult too. It, it was close because Ziggy really does deliver a lot in what he got, what he's got. Let's mm. go on to round three: guiltlessness versus make some music. And again, we have the same thing where Ziggy is really 
surprising to me because like all like everybody they're like no way bob marley's gonna walk and, and win and it's not even gonna be close but i think i think these rounds are close and mm. and we're seeing that ziggy really has the ability to find or has not the ability has definitely found his own voice guiltiness has aston and carlton laying down the rhythm section and you know especially in reggae the rhythm section is not just a foundation it's like a banyan tree you've got to work your way through it no matter what you do they don't just found they define the music and and if, if you don't talk about these two dudes and how they do it then, then you're just missing it out but bob does take a breath on this song there's a small opening for ziggy and i think ziggy's up to the challenge you know, you've got the classic reggae moves from uh, Make Some Music. I think it's great. And then finally, he's shining through this dark canopy, you know, because Bob's so dark and heavy with what he's got. Like when, when Bob brings in horns, especially like in, uh, in Mystic, the horn is terrifying. It's the same kind of horns, but you layer them together and, and slightly change the point of view. And all of a sudden, these horns are, are something different. Now there's a flute in the song, and the percussion from Ziggy is, is great. And I, I just love the... The power of longevity. Here's Ziggy being able to get past the normal things that are allowed in reggae. Get past people saying you can't bring in jazz, mm -hmm. you can't bring in this, and he's like, "But I've been doing it, you know. Like I am this. There's no way. Like you can't tell me what I can't do because I've been doing it. And you you get to this point by being someone who's been recognized through his longevity and his performance. So I give this round to Ziggy ten nine in a in a very interesting and uh, solid round for the kid. <laughs> go ahead and uh, go ahead and go, Wes. What do you have? Okay. Um, well, um, let's go with the uh, guiltiness first. Uh, again, you know, just hits you straight, really dark, like you said. I just absolutely love this track, and and again, I have to I have to admit, I, I never really listened to this as an album. You know, you just you, you know you know all the songs and that's it. But you know, this made me sit down and listen through it, and it was like, whoa, okay, this this is a strong piece of work. You know, again, it's you're immediately transported to the studio. You could just it's it's dark, it's moody. You know, you could just see the, you know, the big spliff smoke filling the room <laughs> and everybody's vibing. You know, and and. Bob Marley has this ability to make the repetitiveness of reggae mm. interesting. I, I have no idea how he does it. You know, if you look, if, if you listen to it, it, it's it's very repetitive. Everything's the same, and you know, it's hard, and there's no key changes ever or whatever. Uh, but it's still interesting. And then make some music. I really think Ziggy stepped up to the mark there. He really nailed that. It's it's just on par with with his dad's vibe and and you know, there's a little bit more original reggae stuff in there i'm gonna tie them on this wow one. <laughs> look at that i'm gonna give i'm gonna give them a 10 both well done ziggy absolutely fucking nailed it well done and that's and, and wes is a very strict judge so to get a 10 out of him you had to do something <laughs> special so uh, 10 point round acknowledged for ziggy good job phil how did you have it so speaking of spliffs though <clears throat> the according to legend bob marley nicknamed or gave david uh, <laughs> david nesta marley the nickname ziggy because ziggy is apparently a another word for a spliff right if you ask ziggy ziggy being the wholesome kids album guy He's like, oh, no, I loved David Bowie when I was younger. So Ziggy Stardust, that's why everyone called me Ziggy. So you mentioned spliffs. Maybe that's an <laughs> indication Ziggy Marley, maybe. <laughs> well, but there's, anyway. There's, an, there's another story that when he was born, his foot was all a bit weird. So he called him Ziggy because it's a soccer term for, like, dribbling and zigzagging. Huh. <laughs> Because he had you know, his his feet looked odd. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other story. <laughs> I had not heard that one. Yeah, I, I find it interesting. This round, I don't know. Make some music. Just it didn't do it for me. I really enjoyed the the appearance of the flute and the, the voice that the flute brought to this particular song. Um, the horns again, fantastic. Anywhere where you can throw horns in there, give me some horns. I don't know the spoken word slash rap. That, mm. that showed up, I, I don't know. It, I just didn't feel, it just felt forced. And I don't know, Make Some Music just didn't connect to me the way that, 
guiltiness, you know, again, that solid reggae, it, it was dark. I mean, singing about the struggle and oppression, you know, with lyrics of bread of sorrow, bread of sad tomorrow. I was like, wow, powerful, powerful, powerful. I have it. Ten uh, nine guiltiness over it makes music. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's see how counter I can be to you guys today. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it's going to be close. <laughs> Let's well let's see how Wes does in round four. Round four, friend versus heathen. Oh, that's a nice dichotomy there. Mm-hmm. Mm, right. Uh, well, let's start with friend. So it looks like we're back. We're back to Ziggy's more poppy side. And again, you get a lot more soca and 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 Latin influences. So I found this one very difficult, and I went I went back and forth on it. But uh, what did I write on the heathen? It, it it reminds me of that time when I was working on on the UB's latest record, and I was trying to be all clever, right? I was I was trying to be subtle and 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 putting little little delays here and there and stuff. Ali, the lead singer, just told me, uh, "Okay, stop right there. <laughs> Put on your reggae hat." Live up to your UB40 reggae nickname, Gunslinger, and be brutal. If you're going to do something, if there's a lick, if there's a delay, if there's like whatever, just push it like it's too far. It's too loud. And you go, oh, no, that's too loud. Leave it there. Uh, and that, that melodic lick in this song is so loud, but it totally works. Mm. Uh, it just drives the whole the whole track, and 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 you're really starting to hear the blues influence on on some of the guitar playing, uh, and and I think that the whole sort of influence that London and and the UK is having on him is is, is coming coming through a lot more. So I don't know. It just it just hit me a lot harder than than friend, but it was so close. It was very very close. But I'll I'll. Ziggy has to step one point back on this one. Ten, ten, nine for Bob. Ten, nine for Bob. Phil, how did you have round four? Well, the heathen grabbed me right at the intro with some interesting, interesting sounds. Um, but the song was so repetitive. So Wes, you're talking <laughs> about reggae being repetitive. This was like yeah. reggae on steroids, repetitive. I'm not sure the language that Bob's speaking. The heathen back the upon the wall i mean is that just broken english or jamaican english i don't know but you know it just it's jamaican english man <laughs> it, it, i don't know it just got it just wore me down but friend again you know the reason i like ziggy marley is because he can uplift you just with this music and friend is another one of those songs it's warm and happy that tone is just you know you if you're feeling down you play that song you're it's going to lift you right up the message is fantastic the guitar solo in it was so refreshing and you know the the organ it just as a it just bundled up joy for me and i have a 109 friend over the heathen all right well i had nice. yes i had round 4 i think friend is just a nice song it's not great but it's nice and when ziggy writes something this is like his professional you know the floor of his songs he just doesn't miss by very much he doesn't really nail it so he's just this episode of the break it down show is brought to you by lions rock productions that's us we publish evaluate and develop podcasts just like this one consult others to build their own and create associated content and content marketing strategies so if you're launching or expanding your social media presence your business or your personal brand or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level reach out to us on twitter at pda turner or at John LG69. At the Break It Down show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. Really nail it. So he's just always in his sweet spot. And this is a solid professional song. A touch too poppy for my ear. But when I'm looking for fault in the song, I'm struggling to find anything. Heathen for me, like you said, Phil, got a little monotonous and it was more trance-like than a lyrical ride. And maybe I expect Bob to give me a lyrical ride with the fantastic musicality of his band. And so maybe that just kind of kicked me out of the groove a little bit. And if I'm not in the groove on a reggae song, then there's enough of a problem here to take mm. Ziggy's B minus of a song or B and then 
I'm like, hey, I'm not in the groove on Bob. So I had to I had to be fair and give this one to Ziggy and his ode to his friends because uh, that's a good reason to write a song. Like everybody who wants to like, say something to their friend, you can, you can just send this link and be like, I was thinking about you. And that's a nice gift to give the world. So Ziggy Definitely. gets it 10-9. Well put. Thank you. Round <laughs> five. Phil, you're going to kick us off and our songs are, and Jesus Christ, it's about to get tough here. <laughs> Gonna get, it's going to get tough for Ziggy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not going to be tough to, to figure out who's going to win these You rounds. know, since we're taking a bit of a, an aside here, this back half of this Exodus album, I mean, the front half is no slouch. But God damn, what's about to happen here? These next six songs. Wes, can you off the top of your head think of any other album that has a back six like this? Uh, uh, not off the top of my head, no. <laughs> Yeah, there's some real damage about to be done here. We've got Exodus versus Black Cat. Good luck, Ziggy. Go ahead, <laughs> Phil. So Black Cat, to me, I think belongs on his next children's album. I'm not sure if Black Cat, you know, if I was trying to read into it, is he talking about a woman? It just, I don't know. I mean, I like the, the horn. I think there was a sax in there. Uh, it had a ska vibe to it that I love ska. Yeah, it just felt like a kid song to me. Unless it really is about a woman, then it's not so much a kid's song. But uh, the, the energy of the song is contagious. I just don't know about the subject matter, you know. But it's going against just a hard-hitting exodus. I mean, the, the intro is just amazing. And you yeah. know from the first couple beats what song it is. Then the bass kicks in. Oh, my God. This song, I mean, you can listen to it and it's, you know, the second half of the album... You know, it's it's it, this this song itself is kind of the turning point in the album where you know he's talking about leaving and it's you know is it a biblical message or is it a Rastafarian message and is it you know really a song about you know his own life or but regardless it's just an amazing song and I have it ten nine probably should have been ten eight um, but I didn't feel like it was fair to have Dad beat down on the son. <laughs> And knock him out. So I didn't score any knockdowns because I just thought that was unfair for the, the old man to, to knock out his son. So I have it 10-9. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> In round five, obviously, Exodus. And, and that's where I'm going to spend my time is, is right from the jump. Excellent <laughs> use of stereo. The two guitars playing lead with each other. The horns. Before there's even a word, this is a tight band in a loose jam, and the groove is a mile wide. Everybody's in it. And the sonic quality is on par with anything anybody has done. And when I say that, I'm including Earth, Wind, and Fire, who bring in all kinds of sounds. And they're absolutely on par with the best band ever at doing that, and that's those guys. There's nobody that puts more sounds, more textures, more vibes and emotions in than Earth, Wind, and Fire. So to so give them that compliment, I, that's a compliment to both for me. Um, when you define your art form, reggae, or when reggae is defined by Bob Marley, it's songs like Exodus that allow a white kid from Cleveland working in a cube farm to escape, you know, his life because Bob Marley says so. And that that exit outside of genre because of songs like Exodus that get them to go study. I mean, I don't know who that kid is in Cleveland in a cube farm. But I know there's one because Bob Marley insists this is a massive round. Black Cat, like you said, I didn't know if it was a woman, if he's actually fucking singing to a black cat. I know there's a lot of superstition in the Caribbean, so maybe there's a real problem there. I don't know. I don't care. Exodus 10-8, and Ziggy's looking up at his dad saying, Jesus Christ, in my mouth like that? <laughs> Wes, how did you have round five? Uh, well, yeah, I think that was a no-brainer but i mean this this is marley's call to arms i mean this is people rise up and oh, fuck you to the system yes big time he just fled jamaica he'd been shot he's over here he's in a different country and and the dude is just a master of translating his feelings into music and whether whether you like or, or dislike reggae this track just gets you bouncing and and it just drags you into his feelings 
which is you know an amazing feat and and you know it's a long song and it's repetitive but it's never boring <laughs> yeah it's that it's that thing again black cat well yeah poor poor ziggy's got some huge shoes to fill there you know it's 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 a happy song it's a cool cool little song gets you bouncing and and like phil said there's 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 a lot more of that ska and rock steady upstrokes in there but i i you know it, it just can't compete with the the juggernaut of of exodus so at ten nine for bob <laughs> all right well let's move on to round six this is beach in hawaii versus jamming the groove in J- beach in hawaii is great the, the you know there's which is always true for reggae things so it's kind of like the saying he's playing a, a song <laughs> but there's hints of santana I, th- I like the guitar solo and and there's a bunch of other good aspects in this song that really make it something cool it's a serviceable solid song that has good peaks in it whereas jamming boy it's really hard for ziggy i mean this this is the difference in uh, in this this format when like you have a a serviceable song like beach in hawaii people are going to play this when they're headed to hawaii and they're going to love it and it's going to put them in the right mood and that that is something that's commendable but this is jamming and oh my god bob marley who again defies the bounds of his genre and gives us something that's really special. This is another knockdown. This is Bob Marley 10 8. Wes, how did you have this round? German classic. Yeah. Um, you know, it's super warm, round, switch off your brain and groove to the beat. You know, just let it happen. Those, those background vocals are just wicked. They're just so solid. Man. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 it has that really clever reggae thing where the, the tempo of the track is quite slow, but there's that undercurrent that's like a double tempo. And, right. and if you watch Bob playing, you know, there might be groove into a super slow track, but he's doing all this bouncing stuff on, on his guitar. Um, you know, and, and, and you know when it's happening, when, when the reggae guys start sort of doing that double double thing. Um, yeah, you, you just can't compete with, with jamming. Uh, there's, there's a bad joke going around in, in the UK. You know, how does Marley like his donuts? We're jamming. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible one, but I had to do it. I had to be done. <laughs> Beach in Hawaii. I got really picky on this one. Um, there's something about the sound of the track that really annoys the shit out of me. And it's that that main guitar almost sounds like it's been time stretched. There's like a weird wobble huh. on it, which, you know, stuff like that just annoys me anyway. And and song wise, it just doesn't feel as strong. You know, to to me, it's 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 a bunch of instruments noodling away. You know, you you, you look at the album credits on on Exodus, and it's the same guys yeah. noodling it. You look at the album credits on on Love Is My Religion, and it's 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 a mile long. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like it's almost like it's you know, it's, you know, it's like a, a bunch of session players doing stuff for the sake of it so it, it kind of bored me a little bit and and i'm i'm gonna ding him for it so 10 8 for bob marley oh yeah well i i think that that's fair um phil how did you have round six well i have to agree with wes that was a terrible joke <laughs> <laughs> uh, terrible ones are the best yep well the terrible ones you don't forget because <laughs> you'll always remember how bad that was now, now exactly. that's going to be stuck in my brain, and I'm going to be thinking about donuts in the UK. <laughs> so let's start with Beach in Hawaii. You know, yeah, I wish I was on a beach in Hawaii with Ziggy too. I mean, but the the song just didn't really do much for me. In my research for this particular album fight, you know, try to pick up on the differences between ska, reggae, what skanking is, rock steady, and this one, you know. It sounded, correct me if I'm wrong, Wes, this sounded like a rock steady beat to me. And mm. so I was like, okay, that's cool. I recognize that. But the song was nothing compared to jamming. I mean, jamming is just an amazing song. You know, you want to talk about re- re- repetitive reggae song? Jamming is a repetitive reggae song. However, who cares? <laughs> who cares? It's just an amazing song. It just makes you want to move. And, you know, with... The, the contrast between the previous song, track five, Exodus, you know, where it's, you know, 
hey, let's everyone rise up. You know, now we've we turned the corner in this album and Bob is starting to, you know, it, it's more of a, a love type. Mm. Let's, let's, mm. let's, you know, the, the vibe is a little bit different as we, as we round the corner on this album. And, you know, it starts off with jamming and the lyrics are extremely simple, but it just works. And, you know, I, I had a 10, nine, Again, could have been ten eight, but I wouldn't let Dad knock his son down. So <laughs> you are very kind. I had Wes and I had him blasting him in the face. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to round seven. This is waiting in vain. Good God, and a lifetime. So let's talk about this. Wes, kick us off. All right, waiting in vain. Uh, well. We can all relate to that sentiment. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there. Um, and, and, you know, s- somehow he's managed to blend this moody reggae thing with a very sweet ballad romantic thing, which is, you know, that's, that's very cool alchemy. We haven't heard that yet so far on the album. Um, and then in the middle, you get that more English rock bit. And, and this, to me, there's, there's an underlying sort of Detroit-y soul feel as well going on and, and some, some, you know, cool blues stuff in the solo, but always maintaining that solid reggae bed everything lies on. And then we put that up against a lifetime so that they're both blending styles here yeah. you know you, you get you get the middle eastern string parts which which are wonderful and then that kind of sort of policey guitar part but for me it loses a little bit of the drive through the track it, it, it would have been cool to make you know that that guitar section a little bit shorter and then go straight back into the riff of the song just to keep mm. it driving it just feels a little start stop for me it, it just doesn't keep you you know like you were saying earlier you lose the groove it's like oh man you're bumming me out <laughs> um so um waiting in vain 10 a lifetime nine all right phil how did you have round seven i really liked a lifetime i thought the the message was strong the, the violin and the cello were a fantastic addition. I, you know, I could see this this pattern of Ziggy throwing in these instruments that you weren't expecting. Right? Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to hear a violin and a cello. I wasn't yeah. expecting to hear a flute. And I was like, oh, wow, it kind of surprised me. And, and I was like, wow, it, it actually was um, additive to the song and didn't detract from the song. What really kind of threw, threw me off the rails a little bit with A Lifetime was the beginning sounded a lot like Love is My Religion. I was like, I had to check. Am I listening? Did it go back right. to another track? I was like, no, this is this is actually a different song, but it really sounded like the foundation mm. for "Love Is My Religion." That said, it was going against "Waiting in Vain," one of my favorite Bob Marley songs, and you know, I don't know. There's not much more I can say about that song. I had ten nine, uh, "Waiting in Vain" over a lifetime. "Waiting in Vain." Well, so on Legend, the greatest reggae selling album of all time it's a greatest hits for bob five of exodus's tracks are on that album <laughs> five of them so the, <laughs> out of 10 songs five are pillar career defining songs and waiting in vain is one of them I, I, it's just if you wanted to find bob marley you play this album in terms of original works it's just fantastic and his ability to put songs together and sounds the way they matter and and just transcend all kinds of things, genre, time, all those things. He, he's doing that. But Lifetime is a nice song. And it's funny that Bob and Ziggy's songs are both about love. Bob is chasing something a little more illicit, and, and he's waiting for it to get there. It's not coming. Whereas Ziggy, again, has the comfort of, of his dad's success. So he's like, I found love, and I harvest it, and I look for more of it, and I don't have enough time to get enough of it. So it's a, it's a different way of talking about you know the importance of these things. And I think it's what the father would want the son to have. You know, I'll take the struggle. I'll take the cancerous toe that kills me. But you focus your life on love. And I think it's a beautiful message that they're able to have this conversation in our goofy album fight scenario. <laughs> so I make this one. Look, Bob's an icon. It's 10-9, and I'm being nice to Ziggy because I really like his music. So 10-9 for Bob Marley. I wanted to ask you, Wes, and take a real yeah. quick time out here. 
Bob's use of backup singers, you know, how he brings the ladies in. It's sometimes it's doubling, sometimes it's a uh, call and response. It's mm. really, really fantastic. Sometimes they just fill space as he kind of skitters around, you know, with his words and everything. What are your thoughts about his use of backup singers? Well, I, I, I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they're, they're an integral part of, yeah. of the whole sound. I think if you take that away, it just, you know, it just becomes another reggae track, basically. But they just, yeah, like you said, they just provide that anchor that probably allows him to be a bit freer around it all because there's that solid bed of, of rhythm and and. I guess the the electronica guys just use pads to nail stuff down like that these days. But, you know, they just did it with beautiful voices. Yeah, and I wonder how much freedom they had to kind of do that with them as they're all jamming. I mean, clearly they get together and just start playing and find things that work. You know, there's there's so many... So many textures that I don't. I can't imagine one person is working through all those problems. You've been in the studio. How do things like this come to fruition? Because there's just so many notes where, like, you know that these really cool mm. pivots and 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 accoutrement are planned. They have to be planned out. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I I think he was he was. I think Bob was probably pretty pretty hard taskmaster and then knew exactly what he wanted so okay but yeah in the in, in the studio if if they haven't figured those parts out if if it's a band that's been touring you know like the whalers and and all that stuff if they've been touring solid all oh. that homework has been done yeah you know that yeah. that's ready to go they just come in lay down their parts and and finished um you know and sometimes because you're working in the studio you do have the luxury of going hey how about laying this one on top or putting this one underneath and just making it a little bit bigger and you just you try it out and there it is yeah you're right they've been on the road forever and that work has been done so when when Mm. he looks at those singers he's like i know they know what to do so i'm gonna take this chance i'm gonna take this leap I know they're going to yeah. catch me. And then I, I'm trying to think of some specific examples, but they're all throughout the album where he does something a little bit different and he's absolutely relying on the ladies, on the groove to, to hold him safe. And Just boy. to pin it, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's move forward. Round eight, be free versus turn your lights down low. I'll go ahead and start this one off. So I, I don't exactly know what to do here. Ziggy's playing more contemporary uh, reggae. A lot more styles are mixed in. And he's a master musician nailing something down. This song does sound like a bit of a B-side to me, though. The chorus, of course, helps really make... I think the chorus is fantastic. It's great work, but just the song... Maybe it's not a complete work or something is just missing for me there. Um, mm. I do I do like it. I like that it's more in line with what his dad might do on, on this album in terms of the commentary. And then there's Turn Your Lights Down Low. Um, and I think of the last six songs, this for me is the weakest on Exodus. And I've got to say that now that he's singing about love in this vein, now he's in Ziggy's dojo. And Ziggy... Is kind of doing his dad, and Bob is kind of doing his son's thing. Only in this kooky format is this true. But you turn you turn the lights down low is a good song, but it's it's the weakest one. And and I've got to well, I'm gonna note the lyric here. Wave of emotion, ask you to marry me, and every word, every second, every third. I love that part where he goes every word, every second, every third. I think that's great because he goes from time and, and he's counting and, and rhymes it in. I think that's cool and it's it's useful. But this song is not as good, in my opinion, as "Be Free." So I'm going to give this round to Ziggy ten nine. Okay. And go ahead, Phil. Are you saying that Ziggy didn't plan his track eight "Be Free"? Uh-huh. Actually. He didn't plan "Be Free" to go up against "Turn Your Lights Down Low." No, I don't. I don't. I don't know that he planned that. You think he did? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I do know that he sounds a lot like his dad. Boy, in this, uh, you know, I had to check, uh, make sure this is a Ziggy Marley track, right, right. not a Bob track, because I don't remember that song in Exodus. Right. I mean, he sounds so much like his dad. Dad in this, um, in "Be Free," and. The this is more traditional reggae feel and the groove was there, and the the lyrics sounded you know the the message and everything sounded so much like his dad. I loved I, I loved that song. It was yeah. it, it was fantastic. Turn your lights down low. I, I was like okay, it's kind of funky. Was this like a little bit of a disco influence? 
Then I was like, oh, maybe there's a little bit of a jazz influence Ooh, on okay. this as well. Yeah. But the one thing I did like about the song was the ooh I ooh I ooh uh-huh. I. Oh, I love that part. But um, <laughs> yeah, I had this ten nine B free over turn your lights down low. And you were saying that five of the tracks from um, Exodus, Exodus yeah. are on Legend. Legend. They're all from the backside of this <laughs> it's, album. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's it's uh, such a strong back half. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> Wes, how did you have this round? Um, oh, my turn. My turn to be controversial. Then. <laughs> uh, turn your lights down low. I, I, I just I can't get past that feeling that it, it sounds a bit like Marvin Gaye. Huh? To me, it could be like a Marvin Gaye track. It's smooth and sexy with reggae stuff thrown in. But it's def- it, it is definitely his poppiest track on the album for sure. Um, there were even bits in there that reminded me of I Shot the Sheriff. Yes. That kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Some Clapton guitar so, kind of sounds yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then Be Free, I have to be really cruel, but uh, Ziggy's voice is stunning. There's no, you know, there's, there's nothing with that. Ziggy's voice is amazing. But Be Free, I just did not believe him. Mm. All I could think was... Uh, well, yeah, you can sing it, but there's nothing for you to be free about. <laughs> yeah, you know, like 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 you said earlier, you've you know you've got all the success of your dad on you know on your coattails, and it's like I just didn't believe it. It didn't it didn't ring true to me, and I was gonna ding him for that, but I didn't. So it's just ten nine for Bob over Ziggy. All right. <laughs> didn't, didn't he fill in for his dad at some point? Or, you know, he used to sing, I think, Bob Marley songs with the Whalers after his dad passed, right? At some yeah. point? Yeah. So, you know, maybe that was, maybe this was an homage to his dad or something. But, it, you know, I just. Maybe, yeah. It yeah. felt, it felt so much like his dad. You know, it was, it was a little bit uncanny. Mm, mm. All right. Well, let's go into round nine. And just in case you thought Bob was out of ideas. <laughs> He comes up with three little birds, and you may not know this song by that title, but it's uh, basically "Don't worry about a thing." Every little thing's gonna be all right if you don't know the song already. Uh, this song does not belong to Bob Way- Bob Marley anymore. It belongs to humanity. If you don't, <laughs> at some point, often in your life, hum that hook or sing it, or want to hear it. If you've not seen it in a movie, it's just, it belongs to everybody. This is one of those special, special songs that is not, the the lyric is fantastic. The groove absolutely removes you from wherever you thought you were. Maroon, so here's how classic this song is. Maroon 5 was paid to sing a song for the 2018 World Cup. Guess what song they sang? They sang this song. So uh, Shane Victorino, who played baseball for the Phillies, this was his walk-up song when he played uh, on the Red Sox uh, in their world championship year. And the moment he would come to the plate, and Phil, you know baseball, how often – actually, Wes, you like baseball. Yeah. Um, How often during a walk-up song does the crowd sing the walk-up song? (laughs) Never, (laughs) never. never. (laughs) But when Shane would walk up to the plate, they would absolutely sing Three Birds as he did that. This song is incredible, and if I could, I would give Bob an 11. And I thought that two different times on this album. This song is beautiful. It's perfect. Uh, it, it's, it is better than the best songs, and for me, it's really special. Keep on dreaming. I have a lot of respect for Ziggy's work, and I don't think this is in any way a bad song, but this fight really is over at this point. I don't, I don't think he lost a single round from Wes's card. And for me, you know, there's just there's no way Ziggy can beat King with there. Keep on dreaming is great, but it's not mm. that great. So it's uh, Bob Marley, and I'm going to say it's 10-9, but I'm being kind. So that is that for round nine. Let me ask you, Wes, how did you have round nine? Um. Well, yeah, I mean... How do I follow what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Three little birds is part of the fabric of society. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just going to win this one purely on feel good factor and painting a beautiful image. Boy. You know, this this yeah, everybody knows this song, everybody loves this song. It's cute. It's 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 just everything. All the ingredients are there. 
Keep on dreaming. I mean, I, I, it was difficult one for me, funnily enough. I mean, Keep on Dreaming has got a great vibe. But in the end, I kind of put it down to it felt like it lacked a little bit of substance, hmm. you know, especially against the sentiment of, of Three Little Birds. So uh, 10-9 for Bob Marley. Phil? I mean, I don't know what else I can say. Yeah. <laughs> Three Little Birds is an amazing song. We were speaking about the backup singers. They like to think mm. of themselves as Bob's Three Little Birds. Yeah. Um, right. Even though this song really probably, you know, according to everything that I read, was about three birds, that, you know, some birds that just flew up to him. But, you know, it's such an uplifting song. It's iconic. Love it. Keep on dreaming. It was interesting. The message was, you know, the actually message was great. I could see this song being in a David Lynch movie. There were some chords in there that just fit like that whole David Lynch feel. And, mm. but I had it 10, nine, three little birds. All right, let's go into the final round, round 10. And Phil, I'm going to have you lead this one off because we're going to have Wes close it out. So round 10, <laughs> one love versus still the storm. Phil, how did you have round 10? Piano intro in one love, just, it just gets you. And then, from there on, it just, you know, it, it's a fantastic song. I love One Love. I was trying to find the relationship between One Love and, and People Get Ready. And, you know, I know that One Love was kind of derived or was an impression from People Get Ready. I just didn't see it. I don't know. Mm. And, you know, even though People Get Ready gets credited. Yeah. Or uh, I can't, who, whoever sang. Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. Got credited eventually. Yeah. I, I, one love stands stands on its own to me. I, I I just didn't see the relationship, and then still the storms. I like the rhythm. Sound a little angry, um, but yeah, and the message seemed important. But I just couldn't get past one love ten nine, um, one love. All right, and I'll go ahead and I'll make mine short. Let's just talk about one love. One of the things that I think Bob gave all of us as as he made reggae okay to listen to was just the different styling, saying I and I. Like, I don't know what the fuck that means. I've got to go look that up. And now I'm exposed to Rastafarian religion. Uh, and just his, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. I don't know anybody else that fills space with those kind of terms. You know, it's not just, come on, or yeah, you know, that kind of thing. And, and there's nothing wrong with those ways of doing it. But he's just got a softer, different approach, more lamenting. And I just, I cannot get enough of it. He's, um, he's great. And he teaches us so much about what it's like to be an oppressed person, what it's like to be in a band where someone from your band is murdered. You're almost murdered. You know, there's just death and destruction all around you. You've been on the road for 15 fucking years and you've broken out, but still never been recognized. You know, you make the hall of fame uh, 15 years after you're dead. You win a lifetime achievement award when you've been dead for 20 plus years. It's, it's crazy his impact and where his soul was with all of this going on around him. I'm just thankful that we're able to share this music. This, this round for me is 10, nine. I, I just, I love hearing Bob Marley's music. I love that he gave us access to bands like making okay for UB40 to do what they did. Steel pulse, reggae Jackson, purple man, yellow man, on and on and on. He kicked down the door especially with this album, because this is the one that got him traction in the U.S. and the U.K. Mm. This is 10-9 for me. Wes, close us out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he obviously, he obviously knew this track very well, because I think they recorded it with the Whalers in 1965. Yeah. And released it as a single. So obviously a, quite a bit of time went into this song, get the emotion in there. But yeah, like you said, he kicked the door down on this one. He's, he's you know, he's he, with. I think with this song, he really managed to get people of all walks of life into this particular style of music. You know, people who didn't like reggae, people who never thought about reggae. Suddenly, there's this fucking huge song that just talks about all of us together, one love, and you just have to. You know, you just have to roll with it. It's, it's yeah. massive. Still the storms. Still the storm. I, I, I thought it was a really cool track. You know, it just just doesn't deliver as much sincerity and emotion as 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 one love. So, yeah, I I I 
scored that one ten nine for one love. All right. Well, let's let's close this fight out. We have a clear winner. <laughs> Uh, on Wes's card, Phil, it's a, it's a hundred points. It's straight drubbing. The the, the dad uh, takes it to Ziggy. Although Ziggy did manage to match him on a round and came close, it sounds like on a couple others. What other Damn notes? Right. Yeah, for sure. And what other notes do you pull out of the uh, card, Phil? I think that I might come to it with a little bit of a Ziggy Mar- Marley apologist side, and just I wanted to make sure that. Yeah, in selecting an opponent for Bob Marley, it was almost almost an impossible task to find someone that could beat him, right? So mm. especially if you're going to look in, within within genre, it's really hard. Yeah, I looked at, you know, possibly UB40 Labor of Love sure. 2 being a good matchup for this particular album, but I just didn't see anybody that could really stand up to Bob Marley. So I was like, okay, Ziggy Marley – can Ziggy Marley deliver with his positive, fun attitude? And, you know, clearly he couldn't beat Dad, but, you know, he definitely... Uh, we got to be honest. In 10 tracks, not many people are going to take down Exodus. It doesn't matter. We did Imagine versus Band on the Run last week. Neither of those <laughs> albums beat Exodus. No. You know, and it's just, it's like, it's just an, an incredible piece of work. Well, I looked at, okay, could Bob Dylan... Could one of Bob Dylan's match up against Bob Marley? And I was like, Bob Dylan can't even match up against Bob, Bob Marley. So, yeah. you know, it, to me, it was, you know, kind of an unwinnable fight, but it was a good way to showcase the Marleys. And, For sure. And um, reggae as a, as a genre, even though Ziggy's kind of pop reggae and, and not true reggae, but, um, you know. But he's the kind of reggae that wins Grammys. He's got seven of them. His well, brothers got three or four now, mm, I think. Mm, yeah, and, and without their dad, though, they wouldn't have been able to win Grammys because there would have probably not been a reg- reggae category for Grammys. So That's, probably, that's definitely true. Yeah, you know, so their dad's legacy, I think, helped them. Well, not helped them in their music necessarily, but helped them enable a Grammy to be won with their music. So, you know, it's more about Bob Marley being the foundation for a generation and, and really a genre of music. And then Ziggy Marley, you know, just appreciating, you know, what he's done for kids and introducing, you know, my kids know Bob Marley, but they know Ziggy Marley more because I used to play that for them mm. when they were really young, you sure. know, one of his kids albums. So, you know, it's a soft way, easy way to introduce them into reggae sound and then get them to appreciate. Which is also attributable to Bob. Yeah, right. Right. But then now they can appreciate Bob sure. as well. So, Wes, what are your final thoughts on this fight? Well, I think I think uh, in general, I would I would say the beauty of of these album fights is that it 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 makes you listen to the music. You know, I I I, I don't see it as a ah, oh, you know, yeah, I completely trounce that one. Right. I I I see it more of a an an awareness tool. You know, I mean, it's like earlier this week, I I helped score the the Joy Division the yes. Best Mode one upcoming fight. You know, yes. and I, you know, I, I, I needed the break from what I was doing, and I just listened to the music and the two albums. I don't know at all, and I listened right. to both of them, and it's like suddenly there's a whole new musical world that opened up for me. It's like, oh wow, okay, cool. So it's it's just such an important musical awareness tool. This 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 show and 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 the and the album fights, I think is just is just wicked and 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 just to highlight the dad's legacy and and ziggy's continuing to take that along and and take us on 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 an amazing musical ride is just beautiful so yeah all right thank you break it down show yeah no kidding (laughs) thank you thank you to us we all get to do this that's the whole point i guess we never did the disclaimer we're doing this because we love this music we love these people we love so much fun yeah there's no doubt about it. And we are going to be doing Joy Division versus Depeche Mode, Closer versus Violator. I think that's our next fight coming up next week. I want to get, uh, I want to get Richard's closing thoughts on the post fight from this one. So, Richard, what do you got for us? Okay, well, that was a fun match, but it wasn't really very close. Now, song versus song, you can argue there were some, there were some close rounds, but it ended up not being very close. Daddy whooped up on son. 
Um, let's look at the official scorecards. We have a score of 293 to 274, which comes out to 97.67 average to 91.33 average, which is essentially an eight rounds to two fight. Um, adding in the unofficial and the official, we have 584 to 551, which made it a little bit better for Ziggy, giving it 97.33 for Bob and 91.83 for Ziggy. So a little bit closer to a 7 to 2 or a 7 to 3 round fight. Um, looking at scorecards, uh, Bob had five unanimous rounds on the official cards. That's five rounds of nothing but tens. On the unoffic- including the unofficial cards, we ended up with four unanimous rounds. Ziggy, and here's the important thing, zero unanimous rounds. Also, Ziggy was knocked down four times. Bob was knocked down zero times. In looking at the rounds that we discussed that would be uh, their strengths, Bob ended up nine out of nine possible points. It's, I think it's the first time anyone's gotten nine out of their nine. Ziggy only got one out of his nine. And a reminder, there was uh, round six, which was a common round. Also adding insult to injury for Ziggy was three of those, of his rounds that he was supposed to win, three of those points were also knockdowns against him. So not only did he lose the points that he was supposed to have, but he also lost more in the knockdowns. So there you have it. This one was brutal. Uh, I can't say I'm too surprised. The numbers pretty much said this. I think I said around 7-3. to three. So 8-2, 7-3, yeah. I scored it personally, 8 rounds to 2. It was pretty clear and pretty clean. So I don't, I don't think it's really any big surprise to anybody. Bob Marley sang about very important subject matter, and he lyrically wrote great lyrics. Even when he was writing love songs, there was something special about the words he chose. Ziggy, very a very fun band. Go see them if you're ever at a festival. You will you will enjoy yourself. It's just not on the same level as Dad, and I don't think he's necessarily trying to be his dad either. If you listen to his music, his music is fun. And it's a lot lighter in tone. So it was a good fight. It was fun. I still got reggae kind of playing in my brain right now. It was uh, quite enjoyable. Back to you guys. Ready for next week. And like you would figure, you know, yeah, this is uh, Bob Marley's fight and the importance of him. And uh, the legacy is so strong that his kids, like you said, Phil, they win Grammys because of his brilliance and what he passed on and the legacy he's left. So this is a good one, fellas. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.